This is the smallest computer I have ever laid hands on, and I think it has the potential to change the world of home labs forever. Let's dig in. Welcome home lovers and self-hosters. Rich here, this is the iCool Core R1. Now don't let its goofy name fool you. This little PC has some truly incredible hardware and features packed inside. Let's dig into the details. This iCool Core R1 packs an Intel Pentium Silver N6005 quad-core CPU with a base clock of 2 GHz and a boost to 3.3 GHz. Our model here also packs 16 gigs of LPDDR4 RAM. Externally, the iCool Core R1 sports, get this, four 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports. Yes, I did say 2.5 gig. That's a first for a computer this size. The unit has a micro SD slot, which can also be used as a bootable target, has two USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A USB ports and one USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-C port, and sports a full HDMI port capable of 4K at 60Hz. Power delivery is done through a USB-C connection with a maximum power draw of just 20 watts, and is all buttoned up in a tiny CNC milled aluminum case that measures 75mm by 75mm by 48mm. All told, this thing weighs only 270 grams. The bottom and sides of the unit are milled aluminum with a gray sandblasted finish that gives it a really nice texture and feel. Interestingly, the top of the unit is plastic, but painted to match the metal exterior. And get this, I bought this unit as configured and shipped to my door for $294. I know you are probably dying to see what's inside this little unit, so let's tear it apart. This little computer folds a lot into a small package. First things first, to get into this little cube, we need to remove the bottom four screws that reveal a very shiny active copper heatsink with fan. Next step is to slide the exterior shell off the unit to expose the stacked layers within. After freeing the plastic top cap, we can see the NVMe slot for the first time, and we can begin separating the layers. Let's unscrew the first layer and begin pulling the unit apart. The top layer of the stack contains the NVMe slot, microSD, USB-C port, two USB 3.0 ports, and three of the 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. After unscrewing the brass standoffs and retention clip, we can see the two PCBs are interconnected with flexible FPC cables. The bottom layer contains the CPU, RAM, USB-C power port, HDMI, and the last 2.5 gigabit ethernet port. To free the copper heatsink from the last PCB layer, we'll pull the last standoffs and gently separate them. Here is everything all separated. This is quite an innovative design and smartly laid out, maximizing the amount of hardware in a compact package. Pretty cool. We're going to install a Samsung PM991 512GB NVMe disk in this unit so we can do our testing. This unit supports an M.2 2242 NVMe. The 2242 is shorter than the typical NVMe disks you've installed in a PC at home, but they're just as fast and functional. As mentioned, we'll be installing a 512GB stick, but this unit supports up to 2TB if you can find one. The installation is just like any other NVMe install. We'll first start by freeing the top cap, remove the first metal layer, remove the retention screw for the NVMe, slide in the NVMe disk, secure it with the retention screw, Replace the metal plate, and replace the top cap. All done. Here's why I think this system has the potential to change the home lab scene as we know it. This is the first time I've come across an ultra compact, low power system that meets nearly all of the requirements one would need for a tiny home lab capable of running VMware ESXi, a high performance firewall, or practically anything you'd want to throw at it, all in one little package. First off, the CPU. This is the first time I've come across an embedded Intel CPU that's actually capable enough to run VMware ESXi with enough cores and a base clock speed that would make it viable for running multiple VMs concurrently. Secondly, the quantity of RAM on board. A lot of times you find little SBCs that would be fantastic for compute, but they top off at eight gigabytes of RAM. With 16 gigs, this little bad boy has plenty to run a few VMs concurrently. Third, this unit has an NVMe slot and will support up to two terabytes of storage. Having native NVMe for storage means its local storage won't be a bottleneck. And fourth, the NICs. Four Intel 2.5 gig NICs in a tiny box is insane. You want to run a tiny high performance PFSense or OpenSense firewall? Done. You want to run virtualization and have multiple physical NICs to connect to different networks? Done. This is my home lab, and I'm very proud of it. It's made of enterprise gear running on Xeon E5 2680 V4 CPUs. 
It's incredibly powerful, but it's also incredibly power hungry. Not everyone can or even wants to have a giant rack of servers using nearly 1200 watts of power running 24 seven in their home. So the prospect of something small like the iCool Core R1 that can give you the ability to begin building an energy efficient home lab or self-hosted environment is pretty fantastic. Now, don't get me wrong, this unit doesn't compete with a full stack of enterprise Xeons performance wise, but for someone looking to get into home labbing or self-hosting and wants the flexibility to run ESXi for virtualization or bare metal containers and doesn't want to take up a giant amount of space or consume huge amounts of power, this is a great start. We have full plans to make a few videos about this box, so if there's something you'd like to see tested or experimented with, tell us in the comments below. But for starters, I want to turn this into an ESXi host and see how well it performs. Installation of ESXi was just the same as any other host and completed without any issues. We targeted the newly installed NVMe disk for the ESXi installation and there were no issues to report. Let's pop over to the web UI and have a look around at our new ESXi host. First time login was exactly what we'd expect. No errors and everything looks healthy. Let's pop over to the PCI devices and have a look around. Hardware is pretty sparse, but that's what we'd expect here. The iCool Core R1 is functionally very basic. You have the CPU, RAM, storage, and the four NICs, all of which are listed here. Popping over to storage, we see our single data store named Data Store 1. Remember, we installed ESXi on the NVMe, which is running dual duty as the data store as well. This is a completely supported approach and works fine for a home lab. I've been running a few virtual machines on the R1 for a few days now, and it's been happily functioning as a pretty reliable little ESXi host. But that being said, there are some things that I've noticed. The R1 isn't quiet. That active heatsink on the unit seems to have just one speed, and that seems to be on. It's a little noisy, and the lack of any way to throttle it down is annoying. By itself, it's fine, but I imagine if you had a bunch of these running, that noise would add up pretty quickly. Another thing to note, and this isn't a bad thing, the BIOS of the R1 has the most amount of options I've ever seen on a system, server included. I haven't taken the time to look through all of the options, but it does feel like when they were designing the system, they opted for the everything checkbox. As mentioned, we plan on testing this system as a miniature PFSense firewall very soon to see how well it handles running those 2.5 gig ports, so keep an eye out for that video. And in the meantime, if there's something you'd like to see us test or run on it, let us know and we'll add it to the list. If you enjoyed this video, throw us a sub or a like, and if you have a beef with anything we said or did, get down those comments and let us know. And now that you've finished watching this video, how about checking out our home lab and virtualization playlist over here. If you're looking to get into home labbing or self-hosting, we got you covered.